break here um, because I want to get Al up. Uh, and I know because he's squeezing us in here uh, in between holes and whatnot. So let's switch gears here. Uh, we're going to talk some flyers. And uh, Al Morgani uh, from 94 WIP is going to be joining us right now on NBC Sports. Uh, their coverage of the Flyers pre and post game. And of course, Hockey Hall of Famer. What's going on, Al Morgani? Not too much. Hey, what's up? They got their uh they got the man that they wanted. And uh it's been a it was a weird day for me. I spent the afternoon somebody wanted to do a feature on the Flyers against the Russians, that game from a million years 76 ago. Seventy six from seven oh, wow. Yeah, it was oh, really I'm like, what why are you doing this? And then of course at then at then at night the big dream comes through. They got a Russian player. So it was, it was an interesting day for me. Well, now, Al, so it did his – by the, the player we're referring to, for, for people who not, might not be familiar, uh, it's, it's, is it Matt V. Mitchkoff? Is that how you pronounce it? Right, right. I know you were, you were high on him because you and I talked about this on our radio show a month and a half. I don't know, whatever it was. And you said, watch out for this guy. Al, I saw value on him as either a two or a three overall. And the Flyers get him at seven. So is that strictly the the not sure how quickly he can come over here and play? Why would he drop a little? Well, it's it's absolutely because of the whole situation. Not just that, the whole Russian situation on what's going on. You know, the Flyers goaltender had to go in the army. <clears throat> That's a, so nobody quite knows. It's kind of a wild card. But he was the second most talented player in the draft. I mean, you know, we, we have to rely on other people's eyes, uh, scouts. The Flyers do have a scout on the ground over there, uh, which certainly helps. Um, but every every metric with him is he's just a game breaker, which the Flyers haven't had for so long. Actually, if he, if there's still a shootout when he does come over here, that would be the guy you finally want. Can't wait to see it uh, when he when he would be involved in it. But it's, uh, it's, still, it's still a bit of a risk. He wasn't even the first Russian to be taken. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I was, I was flabbergasted on a number of levels. First, that he didn't go higher. Second, that Washington didn't do everything to try to get him with Ovechkin. And third, just that uh, the Flyers got to talk to him a couple of times, which is uh, it doesn't sound like much, but when you're investing this much of your franchise into a player, you really want to look past some of the raw numbers and kind of peer into what makes them tick. And the fact that they got to meet him twice, once here, once uh, once uh, in Nashville, was remarkable to me. The amount of work that they got done, homework that they did on this guy before. So it wasn't a, a wild swing for the fences. It was pretty um, it was pretty well planned out. So so Al, you know, we, we know he's under contract to Russia for through twenty five twenty six. Is there any way he can get out from under that umbrella to get here sooner? Or is it just an ironclad deal that he's stuck there until 26? Gunnar, I don't know the answer to that because things change so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's so quirky. It, well, they, they, so it's, things change so quickly there. I suspect after listening to him at the draft, which was very interesting to me how animated he was. Now, he's got a personality. He's not a robot coming over here. He's got some personality to him. He's got some ego to him. And the fact that he seems so determined to get over would lead me to believe if there's any, like people saying, well, it might be more than three years. I would, I would venture to guess, if anything, it would be less than three. Things can happen. I don't know how they happen there, but I know that they happen there. And uh, so I would be I would be uh, surprised if he didn't somehow wiggle out of this thing um, beforehand. I don't I mean, rules change all the time there. And the way the geopolitical map is right now, yeah. I don't, you can't figure beyond six hours, never mind three years. Interesting. Um, Al, so it, it, I know his father just passed, sadly, uh, in, I think, April or something like that. Did his dad play for that 76 Russian team? The, the- I, I- I don't believe so. I don't think so, Rob. Okay. I, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. If I recall that team, uh, I don't remember that name on on that team. But okay. I do think it was. Uh, I do think it was telling when um, he said that Flyers uh, have a stature or whatever. I think, and it's funny because I had just done that thing on the Russian game. I, their that logo is still recognized because that that event was so huge yeah and everything that's gone on for over time was uh, so 
over so blown all, uh, like all over the world. It was right. like they were the Marines, the Flyers. Yeah. And so I think that 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 kind of I really do think it was genuine that he wanted to play in a market like this, which is nice to hear with what they've gone through uh, in the past. So I was really happy that they got him. And this is two years in a row was the guy I wanted. So I'm a little worried about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that they, that right. it was somebody that I wanted. But I, <laughs> yeah, but I, I tell you, the, the only thing that bothers me now is this kind of this, uh, this storyline going around. Well, what's the difference between what the Flyers are doing and what Hinky did? And I, I, I don't find that at all. The Flyers didn't tank here. They, they played a season as hard as they could and, and ended up with this guy. Uh, they, got, they got a break, which just happens in a draft. This is why when you say, oh, let's tank and we'll see. Well, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and you end up with this. It's, like, it's almost like a karma thing. And they, I know they're both going through a rebuild. Now they're trying to draw a parallel. What's the difference between what Hinky did and what Briera is doing? Well, there's a big difference. In the first place, letting Tortorella run this doesn't let a culture come in where no matter what happens, like, well, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. They're trying to do two things at once here. Win on a nightly basis, but rebuild. It's a very difficult thing for, to express on what's happened. But this is, a, uh, this is a very, very strange situation where you have a coach that's virtually made several players untradeable and they still managed to trade them. I mean, let's face it, John Torello didn't do management any favors by basically letting it be known Kevin Hayes can play here and D'Angelo right. can't play here. But they're letting him do it because they want something while they're going through this that doesn't let the ethos get away, that you have to play hard and you have to try to win games. Mm. I'm glad you said that, Al, when you talk about Tortorella, because I, I, here's the way I see it. And you would know this a lot better than I would. Um we all know he rubs people the wrong way. He's an yeah. either or guy. There's no gray area with this guy. But now that this team is finally admitted they're going in a new direction, a new evolving, so to speak, in terms of what we need to do to get back to respect- respectability, I've said I think Tortorella is a perfect teacher in terms of getting his type of players in here, whether it's right or wrong, but getting a group of guys in here to teach him how he thinks the game should be played, mental, physical, toughness. Would you agree or disagree with that? I, I agree. There'll come a time, though, when the younger players come in and, you know, it, it, it probably will run its course, I would think. But in the meantime, yeah. he's, he sounds like an assistant GM when he talks. And, and you're right. He, he, you want this thing. You want it set that you have to play that certain way. And it, they'll come. I mean, we've seen it happen. Hartnell didn't get along with him in, in, in Columbus and ended up, you know, leaving. He just let it be known. That if you're going to have me as a coach, this is what's going to happen. And they're already still paying Vigneault. They're paying him a lot of money. So he's not really going anywhere. I guess there are certain people for a while you have to put up with it because of the situation you're in. And it's going to get you, help you get you out of that situation. Okay. If, you're, if your kitchen is flooded and the plumber comes in and there's plumber's crack showing, you don't really care. You just want to get out <laughs> yeah. of the water. Fix right? the kitchen. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <Right. laughs> That's that's when you are. Al, only you. Only you can work that into a plumber's crack reference. I love it. <laughs> All right. So let's let's go second. I, it's, I know it's great. Let's go second. Let's go with the, the kid they took 22. It's Radic Fox son. Yeah. For, for people who are NHL fans, he, his dad played a long time. The son's name's Oliver. He's a defenseman, a righty defenseman. So uh righty shot. Um were you was he on your radar, Al? Was he a guy that that is highly sought after? I mean, where do you where do you think he? Yeah, falls I think this was the balance act, Rob. Rob. I think this was the pack, the balance. Like he's a sure thing kind of, maybe not that high ceiling, pretty good two way player. Uh, not a lot of sizzle to him. Probably going to be a serviceable NHL player. Maybe a bigger ceiling than you thought. This year, they'll get to see him play some power play, and no small part of this for those that aren't. I mean, a lot of people aren't familiar with coming up in a hockey uh, junior or whatever, but playing for Dale Hunter's team in London, he develops an awful lot of players, an awful lot, and they play the right way. So if there was kind of a risky thing there with that first pick, this is a lot less risky, and it doesn't have that high end that some other defensemen might have shown, but I think that there's a um, comfortability that this is going to be a guy because he's a, a son of a player, 
uh, great demands on him and demands on him in the program that he's in now being sent down, coming back up. So I think it's, he's a much safer, safer thing. So it's like a bit risky and for a really skilled player up top. And then this one here, I'm thinking I'd be, I'd be shocked if he doesn't have a very long, very solid NHL career. So, so, so Al, a lot of people who have soured on the organization through recent years have said, you got to get away from bringing in the former players uh, we got to get a new perspective. So what do they do as they continue to change? They bring in Briere, they bring in Jonesy, and they bring even bring in Patrick Sharp as a special assistant. And we haven't had you on since all these changes have been made. So I wanna, I wanna give me your perspective on the direction they're going in in terms of leadership now. Oh, I don't I mean I I don't know why you would discount people that that were here. I mean, you look around yeah. the league. Ruby won a cup. Talk it's done pretty well for himself. You yeah. look around at guys that have come through this organization that have done very well. Um, they went outside and, you know, Fletcher, I don't think, had a great run here. Um, I, I just think it was and, – and Danny Briere did his homework in other places. I don't think it was – I, I, I don't think it's a mistake. I mean I, pers- I mean, I have a personal relationship with these people, so I know what they've done, and I see what Danny's done in his first trade. I think it would have been a mistake to discount just to say, well, we're, we're going to try to please the, the noises that we hear about this by going outside the organization. I know they looked outside the organization. I know they talked to a lot of people. But why would you not go with who you think is the best? And let's face it, Philly's a different market. And you have to know some. Like with, with Keith, much as he can have some comical aspects, he's a pretty funny guy at times, he really knows hockey. And I look at that like I imagine if Pat Croce had actually known basketball, not to tear down Pat or anything, but he was a a salesman. Right. Mm -hmm. But imagine that personality having a back, a real background in the NBA. I think that's the combination you get with Jonesy and Danny. Just uh, I think we saw through that first trade, his ability to work, the the uh, the amount of work they put into that trade. And I think, Gunnar, I think. I think when you look at the whole front office, the number of people, they have like 55 people down in Nashville. I think what you're seeing in all sports now is when you have a front office, you have to model it after what the Eagles have done. So in my opinion, from a the distance, looking at the Eagles, the moves that they've made and how they've done it with a salary cap, you basically have to hire a bunch of GMs under your control that know the other teams. I would almost have like 30 GMs and say, you're the GM of this team. Tell me your issues because that's what the flyers have done in this couple of things here. They have to study other teams to be able to make the best deal, even in a draft for your team. And I think, I think that's where a lot of this is going. I think the Eagles frankly are ahead of the curve and now other franchises and other sports are following. It's like, okay, I would frankly say, okay, Gunnar, I'm hiring you. You are the general manager of whatever, Tennessee, and tell me every day what the hell's going on. And I might be able to take advantage of that. That's fascinating, Al. Um, right. who, who, um, Al, who's next in terms of tra- Sanheim? I know D'Angelo, there was a snag with the CBA. Like, wh- wh- who do you see going next? Where, where is this headed? And, and, and uh, let me just follow it with one thing, because uh, people ask me this all the time. Are they going to go straight youth movement, or do you keep the Couturiers and those guys around to teach the young kids how to go about their business? Yeah, they've got to have some veterans. That's why I think Tory Krug would have been a, a fit here. But I can see a veteran play. It, it's a you're going to have to get a unique veteran player. You're probably going to have the guy got a guy that's won somewhere else because you're not going to sell him. You're going to have a, a swing at the cup here at the end of your career. You're going to get the solid citizen types, a stall type, or whomever to come in that's willing to work with the kids and be an uh, be a a model. That's why Couturier Atkinson. I think it's important to have them around. That's why. If Hayes had been a Tortorella kind of a guy, he would have been integral. But Tortorella didn't look at him that way. And it was like, well, we, keep, we need to subtract. So I think the next one, D'Angelo, I'm disappointed that D'Angelo isn't going to be here. I, I, I sort of like them a lot more than most people. Um, I know he had weaknesses in his game, but uh, and I, you know, I, I thought he needed to get a little bit better shape later in games. But I think he'll obviously be the one. And, Sandheim, if they can get the right control, the problem is 
too many people know what they're trying to subtract. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, you know, you can only manage to get, you know, one it's hard enough to get rid of one ex spouse, never mind a bunch. And that's <laughs> kind of where that's where that's sort of what's happened. So that's that's where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck uh, marrying uh, them off. Yeah. My, <laughs> yeah. My, my final question to you, Al, in all fairness and, mo and, and more importantly, um, all, all honesty, as we watch this new look flyer regime evolve, how long do we have to give it before we can fairly critique it? Because, you know, from a media standpoint and a fan standpoint in Philadelphia, the critiques are going to come down sooner rather than later. But in all fairness, now that they're moving in this direction, how long should we give it? Is it one season? Is it two seasons or what? I would think two seasons that you'd see yeah. something. Uh, you know, have we have we identified the people with Morgan Frost? Have have we made the right decisions with these guys? Uh, you know, no, Kate's guys like that that you know, coach keeps raving about. Yeah. You, what you don't want to see is what's happened with the pro Rob where that it, it falls behind. Yeah. There'll be a couple of steps, but you don't need a whole class you know, falling uh, out of step. And yep. I think that's, that's where you see. So I would think within two years, I, I think the fascinating part, we'll see how long will Tortorella continue in this style uh, of coaching, which I think like you, I, I, I agree with it right now, but you know, when you, if you're going to get a Goche in here, get him out of BC there, you know, that's a, it's, it's different. There's a different cat. It's, you're dealing yep. with the younger, younger skilled guys here. We'll see what happens. He's done, done that before. So that'll be my curiosity. I, I'm hoping that after this year, Kid Leagues BC comes in, and I would think at that point you should see a, a, a jump, and I'm presuming the goaltender stays here. All right, la that's my, the last one for me. Al, they, they grabbed a couple of goalies, I think, and Cole Knubel, who's, who's Mike Knubel's son, they drafted <laughs> him as well today, which is you want to feel old, geez. Um, everything right now is on hold with Carter Hart, right, because they're still yeah. pending investigations about some of the stuff that went down with, with – the team world Canada, junior right? team 2018 team. Yeah, yeah that whole team is under a that's why none of them can play in a world champ can't play for the crest the uh, maple leaf yep. not the canadian not the toronto yeah but uh right. you know that's uh i i look i'm a big fan of the kid I, I i i hope he doesn't leave here and i think if you're looking at this timetable he's young enough to be part of that um when they get better to to move forward so they'll have options in goal. I mean, they've got a bunch of them coming up. You just never know with goaltenders. Um, I'm I'm presuming that he's going to stay here. And I don't know another team. You just it's such a wild card on mm -hmm. if you're going to give up something. You never really get much trading a goalie anyway. You, you over, it's a weird animal. You overpay in free agency, but never get enough when you make a trade. That's fine. All right, last one. The people are wondering with the hat. Sweden hockey is that what that is? This is a Sweden hockey hat. Yeah, it was uh, just playing uh, golf here. I have to do a thing with uh, somebody in uh, from college, and they they got a Swedish player. So I okay. thought with, with a Good Swedish you. hat. So yeah. Al, Al snuck us in. He snuck off the yeah. course to do this. So we appreciate it. Al Gunner, you want to get to say something else? How's how's the game going so far? How's the golf game? No, I'm not. I don't play well in the daytime, Gunner. It's, uh... <laughs> in the day, <laughs> he's strictly a night guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. And then you need to go play top golf at Ocean. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Al, you're the best, man. Thank you. Uh, have a good one, guys. I'll see you you're on good. Sunday. Thank you, Al. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. He's, he's unbelievable. Oh, Al's my unbelievable. goodness. Oh, my God. The plumber's crack reference was getting Dude, rid of the classic. ex spouses. Yeah, that's Al. That's Al, that's man. That's classic. Oh, my God. I'll be working with him on Sunday at 10 o'clock at, down at the ballpark oh, on WIP. I can't wait. All right. let's. Uh, we're a little behind. So what we'll do is we'll sneak one in here and then we'll talk a little Phillies and then we'll get into our NFL stuff at two o'clock. So let's get a quickie in here. I'm going to tell you right now about ProAction Restoration. Yeah, ProAction Restoration, the place that you reach out to if your home, your business, a property you own goes through the pain and inconvenience of water, fire, smoke, mold damage. They're on call 24 hours, seven days a week to assist. You have a problem at night. You have a problem on a holiday. You have a problem on the weekend. Reach out to them. I did. I called them on a Saturday and they got right out to my parents' house. They cleaned it up. Crew was professional. The price was right. They are licensed, bonded, fully insured. They've been serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. ProAction will work in conjunction with your insurance company. So again, whether it's water, fire, smoke damage, mold remediation, you name it, they can handle it. Give them a call. 610-623-3760. 610-623-3760. Six two three thirty seven sixty or online at proactionrestoration.com. That's proaction.